Right, so as reports state that matters have gone constructively over the weekend in regards of indirect talks via Oman between the US and Iran regarding Iran's nuclear research program, it hasn't stopped many in the US, and especially in Israel, continuing to bleat that Iran are researching nuclear weapons and that all of their nuclear research must still be destroyed. Well, here's a story that goes to show just how stupid a move that might be. You see, April 9th marked Iran's National Nuclear Technology Day celebrating the anniversary of all the way back in 2006, when Iran for the first time completed the uranium enrichment cycle, birthing their nuclear research program as it stands today. Each year on this day, Iran showcases its advancements in this regard. And contrary to any of it ever being towards a nuclear weapon, this year they showcase an absolutely monumental medical breakthrough. Rather than Iranian nuclear research marking an existential threat to the world, what Iran is actually doing could be of benefit to us all. So whilst the US and most of all Israel demand the destruction of Iranian nuclear research based on nothing but paranoia over nuclear weapons which are prohibited in Iran anyway, what could actually be lost would be a loss to us all. Right, so when you think of nuclear research programs, especially in light of all of the pro-Israel propaganda that's so often being placed before us under cover of being news, you think of nuclear weapons, don't you? Because all fear such things ever being used, and we think of nuclear power as well, because we have such things ourselves to power our homes and our businesses here in the UK. We probably consider nuclear medicine a lot less, unless you happen to have had treatment for cancer at some point in your life, or you've had some kind of a specialist type of scan for imaging and diagnosis. But the applications in such matters are huge. And on this year's National Nuclear Technology Day in Iran, no fewer than six major technological breakthroughs were announced in relation to Iranian nuclear research, half of which were in the field of nuclear medicine. Of these, arguably the biggest breakthrough was the announcement of commercial production of Rhenium-188, a radioactive isotope critical for targeted cancer therapy. This achievement shatters Germany's long-standing monopoly on this isotope. Up until this point, the only nation that could commercially produce it. And as such, we could well now see lowering costs of this pharmaceutical and increased accessibility for it for patients globally. Alongside this, Iran also announced the production of two cutting-edge radio pharmaceuticals in Gallum FAPI, designed to aid the detection of more than 30 different types of cancer, and Lutetium FAPI, to be used in the treatment of advanced stage cancers. These developments come just months after Iran's National Institute of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology announced a groundbreaking new anti-cancer vaccine that is due to become available this summer, further cementing the country's status as a leader in oncology innovation. Yet rather than being celebrated, because I guarantee you've heard nothing about these discoveries and innovations, these advancements are instead under threat, with the US and Israel continuing to threaten bombings and sanctions, risking not just Iran's scientific progress, but the lives of cancer patients worldwide who could benefit from Iranian medical breakthroughs. Let's start with this business of Rhenium-188, though, because breaking monopolies is all to the good, especially when it comes to pharmaceuticals, isn't it? To bring costs down for more people. Rhenium-188 is a radioactive isotope used in radionuclide therapy, particularly for treating liver, bone and prostate cancers. Its ability to deliver high-energy beta radiation directly to tumours whilst minimising damage to healthy tissue makes it rather invaluable. Iran have also been able to put this stuff into a cream, making it a useful method to treat some types of skin cancer now as well. Until now, Germany was the sole commercial supplier, as a result controlling both availability and pricing, as well as global access to this life-saving treatment. Well, Iran has now broken that monopoly. By mastering the production process, Iran can now mass-produce this isotope in competition with Germany, we should lower costs and increase availability to more people around the world. So this is not just a scientific achievement, but a humanitarian one as well. Lower costs mean more hospitals in developing nations can afford this treatment. Increased supply ought to ensure more patients receive timely care, and independence from Western monopolies reduces any geopolitical leverage they might try to use over medical resources. So more people benefit worldwide, as they should, against a disease that we all have a what, 50% chance of getting at some point in our lives in one form or another. And this is, of course, what war with Iran by the US and Israel threatens. The destruction of production centres, the loss to more affordable and more readily available treatment for cancer patients worldwide, all to alleviate Israeli paranoia and protect Germany's monopoly as well. 
Iran hadn't stopped there, of course. Rhenium 188 was not the only revelation on National Nuclear Technology Day, because Iran also unveiled Gallium FAPI, which is a diagnostic radio pharmaceutical that improves tumor imaging and allows for earlier and more accurate cancer detection. And then there's Lutetium FAPI, which is a therapeutic counterpart that delivers precision radiation to hard to treat and advanced cancers. So these are innovations that represent an absolute quantum leap in nuclear medicine, offering hope for more people where established and conventional treatments are less able to help them. And yet the same nuclear infrastructure enabling these discoveries is under constant threat of destruction, not because it poses a danger, but because Western powers refuse to acknowledge Iran's nuclear research program is about peaceful advancements. Iran are the global bad guys, you see. We mustn't ever forget this. We keep getting reminded. The Bond villains of the world, the boogeymen. And this is a con convenient image used to justify the unjustifiable all too often. And aside from the whole nuclear aspect of Iranian research, though, and going further into the nation's commitment to fighting cancer, is the fact that months before that Rhenium 188 announcement, Iran's National Institute of Genetic Bioengineering, uh, of Engin Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, even, spit it all out, it's a bit of a handle, revealed it was preparing to launch a novel anti-cancer vaccine that's due out this summer. Now, while details of that remain somewhat under wraps, the implications amid Iranian claims are enormous. Here's an excerpt from Tehran Times to explain a bit more. The vaccine will be able to prevent all cancers, Mayor News Agency quoted Javad Mohammadi, head of NIGEB, Iran's National Institute of Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, as saying, referring to the two new products manufactured by Iranian knowledge-based companies, namely intravenous immunoglobulins, IVIG, and albumin, the official said IVIG is essential for people with congenital immunodeficiency. Due to their weak immune system, these patients need immunoglobulin injections every 20 days. Currently, to meet the needs of patients, blood plasma is sent to other countries to be turned into various proteins, including immunoglobulin, and the products are imported to be used by patients. The process is not only costly, but also time-consuming, Mohammadi noted. Albumin is a type of protein made by the liver. It keeps fluids from leaking out of blood vessels, so it is critical for patients suffering from kidney and liver diseases, he added. These two products are now available to patients in the domestic market. Knowledge-based companies will soon be able to meet 70% and then 100% of the market's needs, Mohammadi highlighted. This development alongside Iran's radio pharmaceuticals proves that its scientific community is focused on saving and improving lives, not building weapons. Despite these undeniable medical benefits and the others announced in technology and industry, the US, despite progressive talks and Israel, threatened to continue with military strikes, with Israeli officials having repeatedly vowed to bomb Iranian nuclear sites, which would include those producing medical isotopes. Further action that could theoretically be taken would be to enforce sanctions that would harm patients, medical sanctions that would restrict Iran's ability to export these isotopes, which would deny global patients access to affordable treatment. Although US sanctions have been ignored by both Iran and China on matters such as oil, so the same could happen here. It could also affect research sanctions that would impede any international collaboration Iran might partake in, slowing down further research into further potential treatments and cures. The US and Israeli attitude also, of course, completely ignores the findings of the IAEI. The International Atomic Energy Agency has repeatedly confirmed that Iran's nuclear program has no active weapons component, yet to keep that ruse of Iran being a nation of wrong -uns, Western media still frames Iran's nuclear work as a threat, serving only US narratives and Israeli obsession and ignoring its humanitarian impact. By bombing or sanctioning Iran's nuclear program amid the medical breakthroughs it is making, the US and Israel aren't preventing war, they're condemning cancer patients across the world to more suffering. However, talks between the US and Iran via intermediaries in Oman suggest a possible thaw in US-Iran relations. Israel will hate that. The talks having gone positively and mostly Iran's way, it's being said as well. If these talks lead to sanctions relief, for example, Iran could soon be able to export Rhenium-188 globally, saving countless lives as that no doubt would, collaborate internationally with others, perhaps Germany and all of that, accelerating global cancer research possibly, and will have proven once and for all that its nuclear program is peaceful, regardless of ongoing rage-filled rants from the likes of Benjamin Netanyahu. But if war hawks in Washington and Tel Aviv prevail, the world may lose one of the most promising sources of medical innovation happening today. 
Iran's nuclear medical breakthroughs are a triumph of human ingenuity and one we should be celebrating, not threatening to bomb out of existence. The US and Israel's warmongering ignores reality. Iran is curing cancer, apparently. It is not building nuclear weapons. The world truly cares about human life then we've got to start condemning threats of military action against nuclear research facilities in Iran and recognise the contributions Iran is making to global health and condemn the likes of Israel for selling an evidence-deficient pack of lies that could prove, prove to be a bitter blow against the fight against cancer and not nuclear weapons which simply don't exist. For more on the mountain of evidence building up from all manner of bodies demonstrating that Iran are not building nuclear weapons at all, do check out this video recommendation here as your suggested next watch. Please do also hit like, share and subscribe if you have not already done so to ensure you don't miss out on all new daily content, as well as helping to support the channel at the same time, which is very much appreciated, holding power to account for ordinary working class people, and I'll hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers folks.